came back. So at this site, we were faced with the challenge of needing to install the electrical resistivity instrument in the winter so that we could measure the spring melt. Uh, and so even though it was only October, there was still a foot of snow on the ground, and you really don't have much option but just to dig out a trench. The instrument's powered by solar power. We have these really big panels up in the woods. And they get uh, enough sunlight all year. And we install these cables that uh, we construct ourselves, and they're permanently installed. And you can see that the electrodes that are uh, hanging off the main wire are uh, permanently attached to the main wire. And we just roll it up in the lab and then bring it out into the field, unroll it, and then install the electrodes. You want to start doing that. In this case, we're setting this lineup to be permanently installed time lapse setup. So the electrodes and wire are designed to be left in the field all year round. Okay, check the bean bag. Ah, check the bean bag, Ian. There's a, I think there's a bigger piece of split loom in there. Okay. <coughs> I believe we're... So to install the electrodes, particularly when it's frozen like this, you need to uh, pound a hole in the ground with a hammer and a stake like that, and then um, the electrode can be put into the hole after the, uh, the stake is, is taken out. And we usually put some sort of um, water absorbent medium in the hole in order to help the electrode get the best connection with the, the ground as possible. Um, and this is not ideal when the ground is frozen because it's hard to get a connection with the the frozen part of the soil, but as soon as the spring melt comes, your contact resistance improves dramatically as that layer thaws and gets saturated from above. <laughs> the lesson I learned as a diver, never chase a tool. Huh. Let them go and watch where they end up. Where was your last point? So, my last point? Yeah. What do you mean? You know, the, when we were starting to straighten up this stuff. The blue, this is the blue flags? The last one. So let's just, you know, make sure that the, the next one stays there. And then I can correct the, the one in the middle. So here you can see the terminals of all of the wires that are connecting the electrodes up to this uh, end of the, of the line. Uh, ultimately, this this end of the line is going to be connected into the instrument. And right now we're just checking to see that all of the uh, connectors are um, totally attached to the ends of the wires. And so we're using just banana plug connectors here. And they'll go into the banana plug receptacles in the uh, instrument. Um, I was thinking of trying right here. All right. As point one. All right. Let's see how it goes. Not too bad. Um.
That's not really good enough. Thirteen oh six. Seven eight. Eleven sixty one. Twelve is eleven point fourteen. At this point we're checking the contact resistance just to make sure that all the electrodes are connected and that they have a good connection to the ground. And so as the instrument cycles through each pair of electrodes. Uh, the operator just calls it out uh, and uh, note taker lists it. 15, 16. 45. 21, 22. Yes. 22, 23 is 1505. Uh, the next pair is 1263. And the last pair. Oh, I remember you. Clear backspace. You have to go function for the letter. Oh. F2 and F. N. Okay. Okay, I'm ready for now. L. And this can just be the date, maybe? That's what I'm using. 11, four, what is it, 14? Yeah. And what I do is I leave the last character for A, B, C, and so forth. So I can do multiple runs on the same line if I need to. Okay. This is NL114A. Oh, that's right. The temperature was supposed to go back down today, too. I believe it's doing that. I'm in a command file? Yeah, uh, pick the second one down. Just go minus one time. D DD28F? Here you can really nicely see the two parts of this particular ERT instrument. On the left is the main instrument that handles the power and generating the waveforms and recording the data. And on the right is a switch box that helps to control which pairs of electrodes are used for transmitting and receiving. Uh, menu. Okay, measuring. Good. If you're interested in finding out more information about the results of this experiment, you can check out this paper published in Water Resources Research here. In this example, we're working on an agricultural field, and this measurement is just a one-time measurement. So we're using a slightly different cable that's set up to be a little bit easier to install. Knowing the line topography is really important for the resistivity measurements, and so one way that we measure that topography is just with a level site and a stadia rod. So here you can see um, walking up the line and measuring that topography.
you're interested in learning more about the experiments we've done at this site, you can check out this paper that's published in Hydrological Processes. This is a site with a different time-lapse resistivity instrument. It lives in a, an enclosure on a hill slope here in uh, Laramie Range of Wyoming. What's in here includes uh, a computer, See, this computer looks pretty much like a, just a tiny version of a computer that you would use in, a, in an office. And this is a resistivity meter. Uh, this is what collects the data and sends it to the computer for storage. Um, there's a little bit of a power system in here. Our instruments are always powered by, um, by solar power. And so we have things like a charge converter and a stabilizer to make sure that um, there aren't spikes due to variations in our power supply. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of wires, and these wires basically connect everything to the ground. Um, so all we're going to do is download the data here, and then we're actually going to go and also um, check to see that the instrument is, uh, is still set up properly, connected to the ground as well as possible. Yeah, so this site is really good because it has fantastic sun, and, and it's a 13 volts, which is good. range you're expecting is between 12 and a little bit over 13. So this is what our um, electric resistivity cables look like. They're all handmade, actually. Um, and inside of this casing is just uh, some multi-core cable that we buy commercially, and then we modify it to make these cables. And so um, right now, uh, what we need to do is make sure that the instrument is, is still entirely connected to all the electrodes. This is a rangeland system, and we have a lot of uh, um, a lot of animals. Certainly, we get um, wild animals, and there's also quite a number of cows that will cruise through here, um, depending on the season. And so, what, what ends up happening is the the animals come through and accidentally take take our instrument out of the ground. And so that's what this is here. This is one of our electrodes. It's just a threaded stainless steel bolt that's connected directly to the, the instrument. So the next step here is to find a place uh, where this is supposed to go and put it back in. So in this case, I'm looking uh, and Pretty sure that this got chewed, but somehow, luckily, looks like the entire line going to the electrode is it's fine. So that's, I mean, it's a pretty fortunate this time. But I'd say this kind of um, this kind of damage is really common on these instruments. Uh, I don't I don't know why. It seems like animals are attracted to to it for some reason. If you'd like to get some more information on the experiment at this field site, you can check out this paper published in the journal Beto Sohn Journal.